Welcome to another exciting online lesson in botany. And today what we're going to chat about is flowering plants. Flowering plants have some pretty cool things going for them. And as we walk up through the ranks of plants, I wanted to show sort of the uh, almost near end of, of where we're going, which is these flowering plants. The end of what we're going to get to in botany is actually trees, which are the strongest and mightiest and tallest uh, things, and specifically not just trees, but these flowering trees that have fruits and flowers and buds. Uh, but for now, we're going to get a little bit closer to this and look at the penultimate thing, these flowering plants. And if you look closely at this thing, wow, each one of these things is a flower. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick one because there are just millions and millions and millions of these flowers out here right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can snag one. See if we can get a pretty good. All right, and it's crushed in my giant hand because this is a pretty small flower. Um, but each of these is a flower. Uh, they're pretty interesting. I will just go ahead and do this real quick and we'll see what's in my hand. There's a bunch of pollen uh, in my hand. I don't know if you can see that light coat of yellow right there. That's the pollen that's uh, in my hand. And we'll get into that in a minute. But the, the biggest thing that I want to talk about in terms of these flowering plants um, is that you have a root system underneath the plant. Uh, you have a stem or a stalk coming up the plant. You have leaves coming out from the plant. And then you have your flowers generally up at the top. And again, unlike the mushrooms that are facing down away uh, from the sun, these leaves are little solar panels sucking up that sunlight, creating photosynthesis. Uh, these things are respirating. The, they're actually breathing right now. Uh, I know you've heard me say this when we're at school. Usually it's with those younger kids that are picking those leaves. And I say, hey, those are the, those are the lungs of the plant. That's how that plant breathes. Please don't kill that plant, you know? Um, that's that's what I'm saying is that how the, that's how that plant breathes and now the cool thing about being outdoors is I am just surrounded by these flowers here you have a succulent you've got this ice plant that if you've ever had your head um, facing out of your car uh, when you guys are driving on the freeway they have all this ice plant um, to try to help with soil erosion they're trying to keep the dirt off the highway it's actually a pretty bad idea um, as you'll learn uh, when we start to study ice plants that they have very shallow roots so it's not exactly doing the job that they want but the good thing about it outside of the shallow root system is that these succulents can actually suck up a bunch of water super quick from the roots so if there are flash floods then it can actually help to keep some of that water off of the highway um, so that people can go about their business and um, just go ahead and keep driving and uh, Oh, look at all the bounty of flowers that we're surrounded by um, out here. Plenty of flowers. Um, even right here, uh, we have some of these wild dandelions. Um, and these are about to uh, expand into a big white puff and send out their uh, seeds absolutely everywhere. Here we are back with a couple more dandelions. I'm going to just put it up close so you can see. These little white puffs. If you give it a little flick, boop. Wow, seeds going everywhere. Now, most things don't want to get ripped out by the roots, so I'm just going to show from a base perspective. I'll go ahead and uh, pull one of these up in just a moment. But what you have underneath is you have a root system that's going to be sucking up uh, some water from the ground, and that's going to be creating some nutrition for the plant. The root system is also going to um, be taking in nitrogen and certain uh, minerals from uh, from the ground and it's going to pull it up here through a woodier stem or a stalk and then once it comes up through here pretty much like the same concept of a straw so if you have this concept of a straw where you know that it's pulling water or any sort of liquid that you're drinking up through the straw it's going to come up here through that woody stem and it's going to feed the entire rest of the plant it's going to come over here to these little solar panels these leaves and um, whenever there's sun, basically it's gonna take in that fire element. It's gonna take in 
um, that sun. It's going to con uh, con combine that with uh, water, with all of the minerals that it gets from the ground. And it's going to create uh, basically all of the nutrition that this plant needs. It has, it has the air around it. It's got that water coming up from underneath. It's got that sun. And what it's going to create is, we'll come up here, it's going to create buds. And once these buds start to open up, then you get those flowers just like we saw up here. And that flower is kind of the ultimate thing. It's all those seeds. This little dandelion, you know, might create, might create a dozen buds. Uh, up here, we see one, two, three, four, five, uh, just on this. And then you follow this down and come up here. Oh, here's another one. It's got one, two, uh, three more buds right up there. Um, and so, you know, it might create about a dozen dandelions. And each one of those, if you look closely, may actually have, you know, this little puffball right here. Looks like uh, quite, a, quite, a number of the, um, quite a number of the seeds have blown off this one already. But, um, you know, it may have had a hundred. So, you know, you look at each one dandelion flower having about, say, 12 buds and each of those coming into a flower that has about 100 seeds, and that might be a complete underestimate. So, you know, you're looking at about 100 times 12, maybe 1,200. Uh, but again, it may have well over 100 seeds in, uh, in that little uh, flower head when that turns, when it goes to seed. Um, so that's the, the very basics. I'm gonna go ahead, since this is a weed, nobody planted this thing. Um, Normally, I do not try to pull things up unless I'm actually going to eat them. Uh, most dandelions are completely edible from the roots to the stalks to the flowers as well. Uh, those are completely edible. Now, let's see if this soil is so dry that I'm unable to pull this root system out. Uh, it's not. So I'm going to go ahead and shake that off, get all the soil back down. Um, I'll get that a little bit later. And you can see it's a pretty shallow root system. This thing is designed to grow super tall. The thing's about... Uh, two and a half feet tall, um, so maybe about half your size. Um, and then it has this really shallow root system. There's no long tap root. Uh, there's just these little teeny tiny roots. So this thing is actually designed to just suck up a little bit of water um, uh, into this stem, uh, feed the leaves, make these seeds, pop the seeds down, create more dandelions, and that's it. So um, it's actually designed itself as a plant to um, it's uh, it's designed to die pretty quickly um, and it doesn't mind because it's gonna you know shoot out over a thousand seeds and try to have as many possible kids uh, as it can because that's a plant's main job is to do that um, so I'll go ahead and break this uh, stem open so you can see let's see if I can do it with uh, one hand that'd be a pretty cool trick uh, all right I will balance this here, pardon the poor quality video for just a moment. And I'm just gonna pop this open and show you what's inside. Um, can you see right here, it's basically a straw. I mean, I don't recommend this, but you could probably take this tube and it's hollow. That whole inside is hollow. This dandelion is hollow. Um, so its job uh, is uh, almost done anyway. I'm going to go ahead and just lay this one to rest, and it'll just become like a natural organic uh, compost for the ground. I'm going to take that root system, set it right back where it was so that all that topsoil is back. Uh, as much as possible, we don't necessarily want to disturb nature, but for the opportunity of showing you this, I didn't think that picking one dandelion was such a bad thing and you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help this dandelion out I'm gonna take all these seeds and I'm just gonna uh, release them into the wild and uh, you're welcome dandelion I kind of helped you do your job and I wasn't such a terrible person for picking up your flower and picking your roots all right so now what you're looking at is a eucalyptus tree it's got pretty similar structures but I'm gonna come down here and you're gonna see a whole bunch of flowers let's tap right here and you can see it's pretty much the same exact structure as the dandelion, but much bigger. It's got the same parts. And that's what we're gonna study last. And here we have a number of grasses. And for anybody who has run their hand through the grasses, uh, you'll know that um, 
as humans, we're sometimes tempted to do things like this and like, you know, pluck these, pluck these little uh, heads of the grasses that are, has what looks like wheat. I mean, pretty much anything to us, I think looks like wheat. You're like, hey, it's wheat. And then you look over here and, you know, you see a completely different uh, type of head, you know, and you're like, hey, look at that. It's more wheat. Uh, obviously, we're going to go into more depth and figure out what these types of grasses are. Um, they are creating these little seed pods at the end of themselves. So what they're trying to do is the same thing any of these plants are trying to do is create as many replicas of themselves as they can. Now, comparatively, um, those flowering things that we saw, those, those dandelions, you could compare those if you're, if you're talking about humans. They're kind of like the, the teenagers going off to college of humans. They know a lot of stuff. They're pretty well formed. They're pretty much becoming adults. There's really only one thing older and wiser, and those are those flowering trees, like that eucalyptus tree that we saw a little snippet of. And here we have some flowers budding. These are nasturtiums. They are edible. Again, I'm gonna say don't eat anything unless you're actually in class with me and you know what you're doing because you don't want to find something that looks similar and poison yourself with it. And you're, you're gonna see the same thing at the base. You're gonna see uh, root system down below and I'm not even I'm not going to pull this one up But you should be able to see this is a pretty shallow root system digging into the mud banks They want a little bit more wet uh, Soil comes up you have this very soft pliable malleable stem uh, You come up and you have leaves the leaves look like this um, and then you have this beautiful uh, Nasturtium flower which is edible. They're kind of fun to pick and put on salads. You can make a little stir fry out of them. You could stuff them. Um, I sometimes come down here and harvest nasturtiums. Um, but, uh, you know, this, this leaf also is edible. Again, don't actually eat anything unless you're with somebody who can tell you for sure that it's safe and that you are looking at something that is the real deal and not just an imposter or something that looks similar and is actually poisonous. Don't want you to poison yourselves, please. Another pretty common type of flower is this right here. Uh, this family is uh, commonly known as sour grass. I've heard uh, people call it. Um, you're gonna see that this leaf shape right here, there's three of these sort of heart-shaped leaves. I'm just gonna pluck one of these leaves off and I'm not gonna waste it, I'm actually gonna eat this. Oxalis is edible. Once again, I'm gonna repeat, don't actually eat anything unless you know that it's not poison so that you're not eating uh, some, you know, trifold leaf like poison ivy saying, oh, Mr. Fox told us this was edible. Uh, this plant is uh, an oxalis plant, oxalis plant um, which is also high in oxalates, which are actually a type of poison and can give you kidney stones. Uh, so you don't want to eat too much of it. But, you know, if you're, if you're foraging, if you're wildcrafting, if you're doing it for survival, yeah, absolutely, you can eat some of this and it's going to be totally okay if you know what you're doing and if you know what to look for. I think it's important also to note that some of the rules for picking things are uh, look for things like um, a snail on something that you're going to eat because you don't want to accidentally poison yourself eating something that you know is safe but actually has some sludgy slime on it that actually is not very good for you. And also find a big patch of something and here you'll see I've got a nice big fat patch of nasturtiums and I could probably pick a whole bunch of them and really not make a dent in what we got going on here. Um, if you come across just one of something, try not to pick it unless you're in a survival situation. Um, otherwise, you know, um, come find a nice big patch of a thing and then you can take an abundance and leave a whole bunch more and they will continue to repopulate. But we don't want to wreck the little ecosystems that they have going on all around us on this earth. You want to just take a little bit and leave some for the plants and animals and uh, uh, and everyone else. And also, look at this beautiful thing. It's a red nasturtium, wow. That thing is so rare. I am gonna leave it there so everybody can appreciate it when they come by here.